All right, it's time for another team preview and game by game prediction. Done a whole series of these. There's a playlist on the channel, 2021 Predictions. Click that playlist and it'll uh, take you to the list of teams that I've done so far. Now, if you remember a couple of weeks ago or, or a little over a week ago, I guess it was, I did the Miami Hurricanes. Up today is the North Carolina Tar Heels. Now, in that Miami prediction video, I had Miami going 10 and 2 with losses to Alabama uh, to start the season and later on down the road against North Carolina. But I said in that video to the Miami fans, losing to North Carolina and going 10 and 2 does not mean Miami cannot win the division, especially since the other losses to Alabama outside the ACC. North Carolina would only have to lose two conference games and Miami could still win that division. After looking at North Carolina's schedule today compared to what I saw from Miami, North Carolina's schedule is a little bit more difficult than Miami, so it's definitely possible that North Carolina loses two conference games this year, and even if they beat Miami, could still lose the division, and Miami could have the chance to take on, most likely, Clemson in the ACC title game. In this video, I'm going to give you a preview for this year's North Carolina Tar Heels, and I'm going to give you a game-by-game -game prediction and let you know who's going to win that division. Let's go. Yeah, good morning in that, though, but it's Uncle Lou here. Yeah, that's right. It's me, Uncle Lou, live for you on YouTube today. Hey, thanks for watching. You know I appreciate it also in two edition of that as well. Hey, subscribe to this channel if you're not already. Did you know I post college football videos almost every single day of the year? Facts. It's true. Some of the videos I make are even watchable. Now, I don't know about this one, but the determination is not up to me. It's up to you, the viewer. So at the end of this video, be sure and let me know in the comments down below what you thought of this video. And when it comes to my game-by-game -game prediction for North Carolina, let me know which games you think I got wrong. And, 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 you know, don't just tell me I'm wrong. Tell me which games you would change. Which games do you think North Carolina will win or lose? Let's go. All right. Now, per usual here, I've got my copious notes. Uncle Lou does all the research so you don't have to. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, anyway, North Carolina Tar Heels, an amazing turnaround in the last couple of years since rehiring Mac Brown, of course, now the head coach at North Carolina, in his second stint as head coach at that school. He was uh, the head coach back in the uh, 90s as well. But if you look at Mac Brown's first two years at Chapel Hill, while they're not amazing seasons, by comparison to what he inherited, they're pretty good. Last year, 2020, of course, a, a year shortened by COVID, North Carolina was 8-4. and four. They lost to Florida State, Virginia, Notre Dame, and Texas A&M. And here's the problem for North Carolina, and this seems to be the case more times than not. North Carolina has a really hard time not losing a couple of boneheaded games every single year. Florida State and Virginia were both terrible teams last year. If North Carolina played those two teams 10 times each, North Carolina would beat them nine times. But you don't play teams 10 times in college football. You play them once. And in the case of North Carolina, they found a way to lose to Florida State and Virginia. That's unacceptable for a team as good and talented as North Carolina. The Notre Dame loss and the Texas A&M loss, while I'm sure North Carolina fans were not happy with those losses, those are understandable losses. Those are acceptable losses. Notre Dame and Texas A&M were both top 10 teams last year. Notre Dame, of course, made the playoffs. Texas A&M almost made the playoffs. Uh, and, and, and Texas A&M, of course, beat you uh, in the Orange Bowl last game of the year. And I did not realize this. That was New uh, North Carolina's first major bowl game since 1950. Wow. Uh, so eight and four last year, seven and six the year before in Mac Brown's first year. He's heading into his third year now. And so you say seven and six, eight and four. Why all the hype? Well, look at North Carolina the two years before Mac Brown got there. 2018, the year before Mac Brown got there, they were two and nine. The year before that in 2017, they were three and nine. They had a total of five wins in the two seasons before hiring Mac Brown. Mac Brown in two seasons, seven wins and eight wins. By my math, that's 15. Mac Brown has won three times as many games in his first two years at North Carolina as the previous coach won uh, in his last two years at North Carolina. Recruiting is also another reason why North Carolina fans are excited. They have signed some big name recruits, uh, uh, Grimes in the secondary, some really good running backs, some good defensive linemen. North Carolina's recruiting has really been uh, some of the best it's ever been the last few years under Mac Brown. They even finished 14th in America in recruiting in last year's class. Um, and Mac Brown has showed us these last couple of years he's not afraid to play true freshmen, even in the big games I would expect to see several members of last year's North Carolina class 
getting a lot of playing time this year. Uh, star quarterback Sam Howell returns. That's the good news. Uh, the bad news, they lose four of their best playmakers from last season. Probably their two best wide receivers last year and their two best running backs. All four of those guys are gone. So North Carolina's got to find a way to make up a lot of production on the offensive side of the ball. They're going to be relying on that recruiting that I talked about here, uh, those recruiting classes over the last couple of years, and a transfer we'll talk about in a minute to try to fill in some of those holes that they're missing on the offensive line. But let's take a look at North Carolina's offense for this year and see what it's going to look like. Of course, offense led by quarterback Sam Howe, heading into his third year as the starter. He started as a freshman, started last year. Now he's a junior, most likely his last year in college. He's projected as a top five pick in next year's NFL draft. Listen to this stat. Sam Howell has 68 touchdowns through his first two seasons as starter in North Carolina. That's an ACC record. No other quarterback in ACC history has thrown 68 touchdown passes or accounted for 68 touchdowns in their first two years as the starter. Second place on that list, Trevor Lawrence, a pretty good quarterback with 66. I'm not trying to tell you Sam Howell's better than Trevor Lawrence, but the point is this is an impressive stat. 68 touchdowns accounted for through his first two years. Last year's offense set school records with 537 yards per game and 41.7 points per game. Offense was not the issue last year, at least for the majority of the season. But like I mentioned, they lose a lot of those playmakers. Both running backs and the top two wide receivers uh, are gone. Now, you do have Josh Downs and Coffrey Brown, who are good wide receivers. They're going to have to play a lot better this year. you got an experienced tight end that returns. So you've got a good combination at the wide receiver and tight end position of uh, experience and talent but you're going to have to find a way to make up those numbers from losing those top two guys. Running back, you bring in Ty Chandler, a transfer from Tennessee, and to be honest with you, he might be the best running back on that team. Now, he wasn't amazing at Tennessee, but nobody looks amazing at Tennessee, at least not over the last 10 or 15 years, with the exception of maybe that 2016 team with Josh Dobbs and, and, and Alvin Kamara and, and Jalen Hurd and all those guys. But Tyler Chandler could have a good year at running back at North Carolina. And he got several talented backups behind him, too. We all know teams play multiple running backs these days. But it could be that Ty, uh, Ty Chandler ends up being the leading rusher this year for North Carolina. Offensive line, all five starters return, and your top six return. Your top six offensive linemen have combined for 112 starts. This is one of the most experienced offensive lines in all of college football, and they were pretty good last year, especially run blocking. Pass blocking, they need to get a little bit better. They were giving up way too many sacks last year. Now, I think you can put some of that on Sam Howell for maybe holding on to the ball a little bit too long or trying to run and not being able to get away and getting sacked. Sam Howell actually had a quote this offseason where he talked about that, and he's put an emphasis on trying to get rid of the ball quicker. But the point is, the offensive line was really, really good at run blocking and just kind of okay with the pass blocking. But coming back, all these guys have another year of experience. I would expect North Carolina's offensive line to be one of the best uh, in the ACC. Over on the defensive side of the ball, you lose Ch uh, Chaz Surratt, I believe his name was, best player on your defense last year, and he's gone. He was an all-everything defensive player for you. Defensive line, finally a bright spot for North Carolina. For years, North Carolina has had an extremely undersized defensive line. Mac Brown put an emphasis on that in recruiting, and over the last couple of recruiting classes, has signed some really big defensive linemen, and those guys should be ready to go this year. You could have one of the biggest offense or defensive lines, I'm sorry, that you've had in a long, long time, thanks to those last few recruiting classes. Defensive secondary might be the best in the ACC. Now, Clemson's got a lot of talented guys, too. So does Miami. Uh, a couple other teams have some good DBs. But all around, uh, top to bottom, North Carolina may have the best secondary uh, in the ACC. You've got three potential NFL corners in Grimes, McMichael, and Duck. And your safety, Trey Morrison, has 33 starts. So he's been there forever and has been starting for a long, long time. One of the most experienced safeties in all of college football. This defensive secondary is really, really good. Linebackers, you get Fox and Grimmel back. Uh, that's good news. Fox could be your best pass rusher this year. He has a knack and a habit for getting to the QB. We'll see what he can do. All right, let's put North Carolina's 2021 schedule up on the screen and find out, can they win the division or is this the year Miami gets it done? Here we go. All right, and just to remind you, in case you missed it at the beginning, I've already done this video for Miami, and I had Miami going 10-2 and with losses to Alabama and to North Carolina. So in order for Miami to win the division, North Carolina is going to have to have at least two conference losses. And when you take a look at this schedule up on the screen right here, there are some difficult games. Uh, North Carolina, in my opinion, could go 8-4 and four on this schedule. Worst case scenario. Best case scenario it's possible they go 12-0 and if a few things go their way. My problem was sort of thinking that they can go 12-0 and without really giving any reasons 
the 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 inability for North Carolina to play up to its potential every single week. More times than not, over the course of the forever, really, North Carolina is losing some boneheaded games. And I mentioned this earlier, but last year's losses to Florida State and Virginia are head scratching and really unacceptable. It's hard to imagine after what we've seen from North Carolina, them running an entire schedule undefeated, even if they could, it's possible North Carolina is the better team in every single game on their schedule this year. It's just hard to go undefeated, but let's see if they can do it. But they've got to have at least one, they, one conference loss is all they can afford in order to win the division based on my Miami prediction of 10 and two in Miami's only conference loss being to North Carolina. So here we go. Let's get started. You kick things off with an ACC matchup. Week one on a Friday night on the road at Virginia Tech. Now, North Carolina catches a break here. Thursday and Friday games are notoriously difficult for the higher ranked team when they have to travel. We see this all the time. Going back a few years, we've seen Clemson lose on the road to a terrible Syracuse team. We saw an undefeated Oregon team lose its uh, shot at a playoff a couple of years ago on a Thursday night with a head scratching loss to one of the Arizona schools on the road during the week. And the list just goes on and on and on. When you have to play a, a weekday game on the road, it's very difficult um, if, the, if the traveling team is the favorite. You see a lot of upsets in those games. They catch a break here because this is the first game of the season. So I don't really think that it matters in this case that the game is on a Friday. The issue with the Thursday and Friday games during the season, of course, is that you're missing one, sometimes two days of practice, depending on if you had a game the week before or not. And it just completely messes up a team's scheduling routine. Well, all North Carolina has to do in this case is pretend Friday is Saturday the week before, and they can have a normal week of preparation leading up to this game. I'm not very high on Virginia Tech. I think this could be their head coach's last year. He's been a, a, an epic disappointment. I think North Carolina goes on the road in week one and finds a way to get it done and gets a win against the Hokies, although that is a difficult place to play. This is a potential slip-up game for North Carolina, especially if you look at their track record of losing games they're not supposed to lose. I'm going to give North Carolina the benefit of the doubt in this one. They're starting off 1-0. Week two, Georgia State comes to visit you at home. Yes, I know they beat Tennessee a couple of years ago. North Carolina's not Tennessee. You'll get it done. You'll beat Georgia State. You're 2-0. Week three, you go on the road to take on a Virginia team. No, I'm sorry. This is at home. Virginia at home. And I think you beat them. Again, Virginia, although I like their head coach and think he's done okay with the talent that he has to work with, their recruiting isn't the greatest. And outside of that one year where they had Bryce Perkins at quarterback and who put up some pretty good numbers, there just hasn't really been anything exciting about Virginia, especially offensively over the last four or five years. They've had a couple of good defenses, but without any offense at all, it's just hard to win games in today's college football. I think North Carolina's got way more offense than Virginia. I'm taking the Tar Heels in this one. You're 3-0. and Now, week four is an interesting game, and I, I'm going to be honest with you. This was one I skipped when I went through the schedule the first time. I, I, I had a this is one of those games where I would not be surprised if Georgia Tech sneaks up and beats North Carolina. It's a road game. I do think Georgia Tech is improving. Uh, I think they're heading in the right direction. I like Jeff Collins. There's a ton of talent in the state of Georgia. If their quarterback can play better than he played last year, they had a true freshman quarterback last year, and, and he looked amazing at times, and he looked uh, lost at times. Um, he's got to avoid the turnovers. Georgia Tech would have to play a perfect game here, I think, to get the win. And I just don't think they can do it. Maybe this scares North Carolina a little bit, though. Maybe this one's close heading into the fourth quarter on the road at Georgia Tech. But I've got the Tar Heels getting it done again. You're 4-0. Uh, and then you come back home for three games in a row, two of which are pretty big games. You get Duke. I'm going to give you a win there. I think they're going to be one of the worst teams in the Power Five this year. Then you have FSU and Miami in back-to-back -back weeks. <laughs> Under normal circumstances, this would be one of the toughest two-game stretches in all of college football. You say, oh, my God, you got to play Florida State and Miami in back-to-back -back weeks. Well, Florida State's been on a milk carton for four seasons, uh, and they're not showing any signs of coming off of that milk carton. They're missing. I don't know. Uh, they're in the toilet bowl. They're circling the bowl. Someone just needs to go ahead and flush it. I think North Carolina will flush it in week six and get a revenge win over Florida State from last year. One of the most embarrassing losses in all of college football last year, in my opinion, North Carolina losing to Florida State. I think you should get some revenge this year. You get the job done. I know Florida State's got that quarterback coming in, Mackenzie Milton, but to be honest with you, from what I'm hearing, he may not even start. Now, clearly, if it was the same Mackenzie Milton from 2017 and 2018, yes, he would be starting. He'd be one of the best quarterbacks in college football. But he had a brutal injury, uh, one of the worst injuries I've seen in a while, and he didn't play at all in 2019, and he didn't play at all in 2020. So it's been two uh, full seasons since this guy even played a game, and I just can't pick Florida State to win a big game right now. They're that bad. 
Then Miami game. Now, I've already talked about this game a ton when I did the Miami preview and prediction. Any, either team could win this game. It's obviously a benefit to North Carolina to have it at home, and that's why I gave North Carolina the win in this game. If this game would have been at Miami, I'd have given Miami the win. I'm high on Miami this year. Like North Carolina, they return an amazing quarterback uh, as well in De'Eric King. This is going to be a fun game to watch. Two of the most exciting quarterbacks in college football, Sam Howell and De'Eric King. I'm giving uh, North Carolina the edge because it's a home game. You're undefeated three weeks, seven at 7-0. Seven oh. Now you get your bye week, come out of that, you got to go on the road at Notre Dame. Again, I think you catch a break in terms of when you play Notre Dame. Last year, you stuck with them for the first half, and the second half, they kind of pulled away. Notre Dame loses a ton of offense heading into this year. They also lose their uh, defensive coordinator from last year. I know this is on the road. This is another game that you could definitely lose if Notre Dame ends up being a little bit better than I think they will. But I already did the Notre Dame preview. So if you saw it, then you already know I've got you winning this game as well. And you're now 8-0 with four games to go. You come back home, you play a terrible Wake Forest team, you'll get a win. 9-0. On the road at Pitt, home against Wofford, on the road at NC State. Wofford is going to be a win. Uh, just pencil that in now. Now let's talk about these two road games at Pitt and at NC State. Now I'm going to freely admit to you right here. I, clearly I could be wrong on my predictions. It's happened a time or two before. I do not think North Carolina is going 12-0. I don't think North Carolina can play good enough, consistently enough, over the course of a season to beat every single team they play. That's not a knock on North Carolina because most teams suffer from that same illness. Uh, think about all the really good teams that never go undefeated. I mean, outside of Alabama, Oklahoma, uh, Clemson, Ohio State uh, has had a couple of undefeated seasons. You just don't see it very often. Most teams lose at least one game a year they're not supposed to. And given North Carolina's track record in some of these games, there's no way I can predict North Carolina to go 12-0. For that reason, and the fact that I've got you sitting at 9-0 through nine games, you've got to lose one of these last two games of, or at Pitt or at NC State. It could be either one. Honestly, it could be at Georgia Tech and you win both at Pitt and at NC State. I've got you losing on the road at Pitt. They got a pretty good defense. They got some work to do offensively. It's a, it's a road game late in the season. Could be cold up there. I've got North Carolina taking their first and only loss of the season on the road at Pitt. You beat uh, Wofford, and then I'm giving you a win against in-state rival NC State, but you maybe you lose that one and beat Pitt. I'm not very confident on this one in which game North Carolina would lose. In fact, their two most difficult games, Miami and Notre Dame, I have you winning. And we see this a lot of times with good teams. They're able to get up and play to their potential against the good teams. And, it's, and when they slip up is against one of these teams that they should basically beat easily. It happens all the time. This isn't a knock just on North Carolina, although the stats do back it up with North Carolina that they've got a uh, – habit of losing head-scratching games, again, going back to last year with the Florida State game. So there it is. I'm sorry uh, to the Miami fans. I've got North Carolina going 11-1 with one conference loss. Uh, Miami also with the one conference loss, but North Carolina will have beat Miami in the head-to-head -head matchup, according to the Uncle Lou predictions, and North Carolina will win the division and take on, like I said, most likely Clemson in the ACC title game. Of course, I could be wrong. This is no disrespect to Miami. I legitimately think this is one of the best teams Miami has had since joining the ACC uh, 15 or 16 seasons ago, and I would not at all be surprised to see Miami represent that division in the ACC title game against Clemson. So I, you know, I, I know I do a lot of trash talking videos, and I like to make a lot of jokes about certain teams and things like that. This isn't the case here. I would not be surprised at all to see Miami show up uh, in Charlotte for the ACC title game, but I'm going with North Carolina at 11 and one. All right, I appreciate you guys watching. Have a good morning.